Hey everybody, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, that website address for you, if you don't already know, is theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Uh, today's post is going to be for the research clinics. It's going to be covering IRBs, Institutional Review Boards, and in anticipation for my DVD, Introduction to Clinical Research DVD, I do cover this topic in there. Um, but I want to get into some detail as far as IRBs and different kinds of IRBs. So for most research clinics in the U.S., there's two kinds of IRBs. There's local IRBs, and then there's central IRBs. And local IRBs are mostly for academic institutions and hospitals or certain investigators that are required to use local IRBs. Central IRBs are IRBs that are selected by the CRO, or the pharmaceutical company to work with the sites that are allowed to work with central IRBs and most sites are allowed to work with central IRBs the difference is the length of the approval process local IRBs usually are much more strict because they don't only deal with the research they deal with ethics of hospitals ethics of academic institutions and central IRBs they also deal with ethics but their main concern and their only focus is actually the ethics as far as that particular clinical trial that the CRO and the sponsor are conducting. So central IRBs usually have their own processes that are streamlined and make site startup a lot faster. Um, I, I don't want to use the term cookie cutter approach, but they basically streamline everything. So from the approval process to the way they look at the informed consent and approve that. They also look at the protocols and approve that because remember the role of an IRB is to make sure that no unnecessary harm is done to any study participants. So they really look at the studies to make sure that there's um, enough safeguards in place to provide benefits and make sure that those benefits outweigh the risks for people who join studies. And local IRBs also do the same for when it comes to studies. But local IRBs also have a lot of more functions when it comes to that particular academic institution or the hospital involved. So hopefully this helps just share some uh, insight for you guys into the difference between central and local IRBs. And if you can, if you have any choice, I highly recommend using, using central IRBs. If you don't have any choice, I mean, you're kind of out of luck. You have to deal with the local IRBs and their approval processes are much longer. That doesn't mean that they look at ethics more. That doesn't mean that they're more concerned about study participant rights as opposed to central IRBs. It just means they have their own internal processes which unfortunately cannot be standardized for every study like central IRBs can. Hopefully this helps. I want to give my clinical trial guru producers a shout out. That's Sarah Elizabeth Siegler, Resolve Research Solutions, Accurate Clinical Trials, Erd Heart Clinical Trials, PTNR, Patrick Stone, we have Darshan Kulkarni, Mozio, Zymewire, Biopharm Systems, Breakthrough Clinical Trials, and South Coast Clinical Trials. And if you want to be a clinical trial guru producer, email me, dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. The cost is 99 bucks for a lifetime membership. That's my current price. It's going to go up soon, so get in now. Send me an email, and you get mentioned in every video links to your site, free interviews, and things like that, all that good stuff. Hopefully this helps. Central IRB versus local IRB. Thank you very much.